Hi guys, uh, this is Hao. I'm the CEO of Vietcetera Media. I'm calling in from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Uh, we have, uh, we're very lucky to have a guest with us today. Um, his name is Loic Gautier. He is the former CEO and founder of Le Flair Vietnam, which was uh, actually Le Flair, which was also in the Philippines. Um, one of the largest uh, at, at its time e-commerce players in the market. Um, Le Flair is a really well-respected tech entrepreneur, founder, executive, He's gone, he's gone uh, done a few things. And unfortunately, as we all know, LaFleur um, declared bankruptcy a couple months back. Uh, we're lucky to hear, have uh, Loic here with us today. He's calling in from Paris, um, where, his, where he's from originally. And he's been really fortunate um, to share with us today, or lucky, we're lucky enough to, to hear from him today about his experiences and his lessons learned, some positive takeaways, um, some negative takeaways from his experience uh, building this company. Um, so again, we're super happy to have you here, Loic, today. Um, please, uh, we'd love for you to introduce yourself, introduce yourself and kind of just share what's been happening. We'll just start with like, you know, COVID aside, you know, it's been three, four months since that happened. What's going on in your life the last three months? Where are you at the moment? What are you doing? First of all, yeah, thanks, Hao, and, and good to be here. And, and hi, everybody. Uh, where, where am I at right now? Well, I'm, I have a, a opportunity I had to, to leave Vietnam uh, during the COVID crisis because of you know, visa issues and the fact that I was separated from my family and so uh, I, I uh, you know having uh, experienced a bankruptcy I kind of needed as a bit of time you know to, to, to process it and, and, and be closer to the uh, people that uh, you know are important to me and so I spend uh, you know past a few months uh, overseas and and I hope to be able to come back to Vietnam fairly soon because I you know obviously still have a lot of love for this uh, country and this is you know although I'm French I still consider Vietnam uh, uh, you know being my home yeah and you you have um so you have uh, a child as well with uh, a Vietnamese partner so they are in the U.S. Absolutely. And then, so you were in the U.S. Absolutely. You left Vietnam to the U.S. to be with them, and then now you're back in Paris, which, I mean, it's better to be in the U.S. at this point given COVID. Uh, but you're here with your family in, in France, and you're you're making your way back to hopefully to Vietnam at some point. Um, so yeah, uh, we're so today for those of you following us, um, thank you again for um, for calling in, hearing our, our chat with Loic today. Uh, we have a set of questions that we're just going to run through. Um, we've shared it with Loic in advance, so he's kind of been able to prepare and kind of think about these questions that we're going to ask him. Um, and it's an opportunity for everyone to know what, what's really going on with LaFlair, which used to be um, one of the most respected and, and still is to some, to some degree, um, kind of stories that came out of Vietnam. So anyways, look, I'm going to jump into it. Um, in the press, you know, you've consistently been quoted as saying you're bullish on Vietnam's economy. You go back to 2015 when you started LaFlair up until, you know, uh, the very end. Um, does your experience with what happened at LaFleur change your opinion? Um, and if, well, for whatever reason, either as well, will you return to Vietnam for those same business opportunities that brought you here in the first place? So uh, I'll let you kind of take the stage here. So does it change my view of the, the Vietnam economy? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm still, you know, Vietnam is, is, is a formidable territory and, and you know, it, it, if my view changed, it, it means that I, I would not be true to my, uh, uh, to, 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 to the pitch I've, I've, I've given for the past seven years, right? So the same reason why I was so excited to come in Vietnam seven years ago, I am still uh, a st strong believer of the Vietnamese economy. Uh, do I did my, my views changed about how to do business in Vietnam? Yes, but the Vietnam economy is still very excited and I will, I will definitely come back to Vietnam. This is definitely not my last, uh, you know, the last company I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start and, 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 and try to build uh, uh, in Vietnam. You know, as, as you said previously, I'm committed to Vietnam for a very, very long time, having, having a child and, and, and a partner and considering this country like my home. I kind of also feel like, uh, you know, there's such, such a strong connection that I want to uh, contribute as well, right? I, I want to do my part. Uh, Got it. And, you know, given the, a lot of the press coverage right now, that's um, not sure how accurate it is. Um, 
does that kind of uh, affect your kind of timeline for coming back to Vietnam? Like, what are you doing currently to address those allegations and things that are happening? So, you know, just to, 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 to be clear, I'm not, uh, I, I did not leave the country because of, because of this, right? I left the country uh, to be closer to my family and I, I cannot come back, not because uh, there is apparently an investigation going on in Vietnam uh, uh, about some of the practices that we had at Le Flair, but it's simply because of COVID, right? The borders are closed. Uh, no foreigner can, can, can go pa come back in until September or even even end of the year. So as soon as I can come back, I'm 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 going to be back, right? After that, we are in 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 touch with the uh, people that are uh, helping us with our case, whether it's lawyers, whether it's the court, the Ho Chi Minh City People's Court, even the police, right? I think a lot of the press coverage, as 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 I'm sure you know, is is it's very, very, very sensational. Right? Headlines are exactly headlines are very sensational. People love the love a, a, the love the story of a, a company or, or 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 people that are failing as much as they love stories about success, right? It's it, it, in and in, in the press in particular. I think you know it's 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 important on 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 our end and hopefully for the people that are interested in really understanding the story to go to to try to see through as well the sensational headlines and and you know let the court do its work we've you know recently received news a couple hours ago that the Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh City court uh, accepted our petition to file for bankruptcy so you know it's not it's not it's not as uh, as, uh, as as bad as it looks in in some of the media report right yeah and your co-founder Pierre um, he's still in Vietnam as well so he, I'm sure he's had to kind of um, support the business and make sure that it proceeds through. So he's still in Vietnam and he has no intention of leaving. Well, in Vietnam, he's not, he's, he's not been arrested by the police or anything like that, right? So it's, it's maybe an investigation, right? Because I think that when the police receive so much pressure, when they see that such a, a large group of people are extremely motivated to bring a case to the press or to the police and so look into it, right? After yes. the police is paid with people taxes, so if the people request something, they have to look into it. Uh, but I, I, I believe that you know this, this this is going to be a constructive investigation that they're going to look past the maybe either the accusation from people that may have been you know really upset and may have you know experienced financial difficulties because of the the our, our bankruptcy and our insolvency and I'm sure it's gonna it's gonna stay constructive and that you know whether it's police or, or court is it's gonna, it's gonna do its work right what were some of the major accomplishments that Lafleur made in regards to the tech and biz business ecosystem in Vietnam because you guys started five you know six years ago when basically nothing was really out there what were some of those accomplishments mm -hmm. that you want to share today that you remember and hopefully will continue to add to the, to the ecosystem? So, I, I mean, I think first thing is the fact that we, we have, I, 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 I hope, proven that you can, you can build an, an e-commerce company which is considered, you know, extremely capital intensive and, you know, something that people, uh, I, I think, in Southeast Asia only see big companies from from overseas doing coming in with billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars and basically being just a money game that that no uh, uh entrepreneur can 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 basically start up i think that n number one we, we've proven that that it's it's not true right you can build a sizable business in e-commerce uh, starting from from very little, almost nothing, because when we started, you know, we, we started at 25 years old. We used to work at Lazada for 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 just a little time. We didn't have much savings, and we basically went, you know, trying to go into a, a a business that is extremely capital intensive and that has a lot of barriers to entry. So I think number one is that you know, re re regardless what kind of uh, industry you're trying to break into. And regardless how much capital you, you're, you're able to put from your own pocket in Southeast Asia and in Vietnam in particular, this is definitely possible. I mean, as an as an entrepreneur, and when you when you look back, uh, you, you realize that the, the, the successes that, that really matter uh, and, and the things that really have you know the most positive impact are always about people, 
right? And people and what you've, you know, you, you, you forget about revenue, you forget about your PL, you forget about the profit, right? You, you, you remember about the company culture, you remember about the number of people that have worked with you and eventually have been able to uh, b- build their lives because you know you build a successful company that was able to you know pay them salaries they they started to have families some of them have had ca- career in some other areas and, and 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 grown a great deal so i think that that's the kind of moments and the things that you're the the, the proudest when you look back after you know an experience that we may that we may have had mm-hmm. after that i'm personally very proud of uh, the fact that we've been able to grow more country right uh, being able to go to start in vietnam and then go to the philippines and have a business as well in singapore is uh, you know, something that to do that that is you know, pretty hard feat to put off to be honest and you know the, fa- the fact as well that we've tried some new business model also for example with the, with the cross-border e-commerce with the with the singapore setup that we have that we have created in order to connect and bring more merchandise that Vietnamese do not have access to locally and that we would able to consign from a warehouse in Singapore merchandise coming from the US from from you know other parts of Asia that we would ship directly to to to, to Vietnam and to the Philippines is something that you know, in terms of the the problems you solve and, and and the added value as a company you 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 create for for your customers and and and, and for the economy is, is, I believe, you know, something very important. And so it sounds like, you know, people, innovation, business models, there's been a lot of accomplishments that uh, your team has been able to do. Yeah. Um, what is the single most proudest accomplishment that you have had? Not just your team and the collective energy that you were able to build, but was there a moment that really defined kind of your experience? It could be both positive or, or negative, mm-hmm. something that you really learned from personally. Maybe it was that first investor check that you got, um, you know, showing that you were able to do this or your team was able to do that. What was something that you personally resonate with most at at a personal level in terms of your own development? I think for me, again, was was about people and, and for example, the first hundred employees, right? And then when you start getting, uh, you know, 150, 200 and, and when, you know, five years after you've, you've, incorporated the company you realize that you have you know more or less hired 600 or 700 people that 700 people have uh, gone through your company and eventually you know build their lives and do, 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 do things after that is something that I'm, I'm i'm very very proud of after that in the end uh, you, you cannot uh, anticipate or you cannot you're not, you're not prepared for all the things that that you are going to be able to achieve all the time so in the end you know my expectation when we started in, in December 2015 I, w- I did not expect that we would be able to to survive six months right we were we were a little crazy a little ambitious and, and, and very confident but we absolutely not uh, we, 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 we did not anticipate that this would have the, the success that we've had until you know until the very end so it's difficult to point to, uh, at, at a very you know, specific achievement. It is, it's a whole experience, a whole package. Right? So you talk a lot about the people and the lives that they were able to create while at the time of the Flair, both personal and professional development wise. Um, why do you think the employees of the Flair chose the Flair? You know, they have so many options. If they get a job at the Flair, chances are they could have at Shopee, at Tiki, at Sendo, among other technology companies. What, what were some reasons why they chose Le Flair at the end of the day? Well, one of the things that we, we, we did uh, probably the, the, the best, I'm not saying that it did not create some, some other pro- problems, but uh, uh, we really tried with Pierre-Antoine to create a company that would be a, an, an environment that promotes freedom and, and accountability and you know really uh, and, and responsibility personally on my end the, the couple of years of experience i've had in in, in, in you know bigger corporation and so on I've, I've always had a hard time with with control and sometimes office politics and things like that and i remember you know b- being one of the the things that i that hated most about you know uh, working in corporate and so when it was when we had to 
the opportunity to create our, our, our own company. I kind of always wanted to, to create a culture where, you know, if you are an individual that, is, that, that, that wants to achieve great things, you want to work hard and you, you want to prove yourself, uh, that Le Flair would be the type of company where, you know, you, you, you would never be limited to doing that. On the other end, if you are someone who require, who needs a lot of structure to do great, who needs that kind of constant uh, tap on the back to tell you that you know it's 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 great what you have provided this week and so on, this may not be the the, the best place to work. And so I'm not saying that we, we've we've had a high turnover, right? We've had at some point uh, of our of our company life, we've we've had like 40 to 50 percent of people that would not you know, and, and stay more than one year uh, at the company. But those things after that, as we got more and more confident about what our company culture was and that, that, that we were real about it, right? Because there is often, you know, some, some companies say they are a certain way, but then when you get in, you know, you, you, ex you experience it differently. For us, I believe that we were always real about, about, about those aspects that we were trying to promote. And I, I, I feel like, uh, we were good at communicating it to people who who want, want, wanted to that kind of wanted to work in that kind of environment and and, and to keep them motivated. Um, I think that's the that's the main difference. It's not about the fancy office. It's not about you know selling uh, great, great great products. I think all of, all of these are secondary. That's maybe what makes you respond. To to uh, to uh, a, a job post at, at at first, but after that you know you don't you don't, you don't last two months, especially in Vietnam where uh, the job market is so competitive. You know, like like people have so many options. Every single week they receive uh, job opportunities in their on the on, in, in their LinkedIn. You 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 can't keep them unless you know you really provide a, a, a different value, and that's that th I think that's what we we, we provided very free environment. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> we're going to move over a little bit more to the challenges and some of the lessons that you learned as well. Um, and we'll start first with your investors. Um, LeFlair, I think to date, has had raised something like 12 million US dollars, which ranks it amongst probably the top 10 or 20 VC-backed startup, technology startups in Vietnam. Um, who are those investors, uh, if you can share any of them, and why do you think they trusted you and the LaFleur business model um, when they had so many other options? First investors were, were a company, so it was basically a corporate VC uh, from a company called Apple Tree Group uh, that you may know in Vietnam because they have several very successful businesses that are, that, you know, that, a lot of people use and so this company at, uh, is, is actually owned by two French brothers entrepreneurs that have been in Vietnam for 25 years and so it's the first uh, you know investment is going to be very emotional probably 70% emotion 30% rational quite honestly they saw two young guys full of ambition in a foreign country Committing, you know, committing and really who we, we've done, you know, we've done the work for month and month and month preparing, getting our business ready, putting everything we had, all our savings we had, even if it was not that much, but everything that we had, sleeping on the couch and renting our rooms on, on, on Airbnb to be able to, to, to pay our bills. And they basically saw, saw themselves, I think, 25 years ago when they arrived in Vietnam, right? And I think it's... Uh, all of this is a cycle. When you're when you're a successful entrepreneur, you've 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 done well, and you reach a certain age. You know you're in your fifties, and you, you don't need more. It's not about the money, right? You don't you, you don't need to invest in companies to make more money. But it's your it's 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 how you give back to the community. It's how you give back to the to, to the next generation. And I think in 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 our case, it was probably you know. As I said, seventy percent emotional. They saw themselves twenty-five years ago, and, and, and this is kind of what made them uh, um, tick. And 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 decide, and they decide, decided to invest after that. After that, everything is more rational, right? After the first one, so for us, our first investment was three hundred thousand dollars, and after that, obviously, you have enough capital to. Uh, launch your product to prove that you have a product market fit and after that you know everything becomes more rational it's it's about you know it's about 
uh, validating one or a few of your kind of assumptions proving that you have your you have your initial plan you know your 10 10 years plan that is gonna that is gonna, that you're gonna have to break down into uh, some some sort of assumptions that you're gonna validate year after year year after year and, and the game is about you know I prove my assumptions for 2015 for 2016 and then you have a few more investors that are gonna you know more and more believe you trust you and then the more you kind of achieve and, and have successes uh people that you talk to after that are going to trust that you know when you say you're going to achieve more you're going to you're going to deliver on that so we started with obviously small vcs angel investors uh people that would put you know 100k 200k ticket and, and we would you know for example our first one million dollar round in 2016 we had like six or seven people participating, you know, very small. So it was very, very complicated. And at the end, you know, the last round, seven million was just two investors. It was relatively straightforward and, and, and the process was not, but it was, it was not the hardest round to raise. Uh, so the, the, the biggest round is not, the, the, the bigger the round, the not, it's, it's not the harder, uh, it's not harder to raise, right? And it sounds like you were you were in talks to raise up to almost up to forty million U.S. dollars yep. of Series C investment. Um, yep. Who, who yeah. were the people that you were talking to, and was there a point where you felt like, yeah, this is going to happen? And then, what? Why did it kind of collapse last minute? We 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 went back to uh, market uh, at the at the end of two thousand nineteen. So I'll say October two thousand nineteen was the year where we were preparing ourselves for a hundred or 200 million dollar revenue so the we, we closed around in january 2019 or december 2019 and that capital we almost exclusively used to upgrade our kind of capabilities whether it's technology operation people we we, we, we opened the philippines and so on and so forth so 2019 was the year of the investment so that after that our uh, infrastructure would be ready when we receive a 30 or 40 million dollar investment to invest further into you know advertising and and, and 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 marketing in order to literally multiply the revenue by three or four or five whatever in october or, or like october when we when we started those discussion the, the market was not uh, like i mean th this was not a strategy that was uh, vilified uh, it was it was a very you know I, I mean it was a very common approach by unfortunately a lot of startups we I mean unfortunately or I mean it was it's just was just a different 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 year right a different way of doing business and so we discussed with VCs and and private equity in in Europe and the US and China and Korea Japan and so on and so forth and we had a lot of interest because obviously. I'm not the only one who is very bullish on the Vietnamese economy. The whole world is excited about about Vietnam and, and Southeast Asia, but it 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 appeared that exactly at the same time there were more and more uh, controversy around what had happened to you know businesses that were uh, like like businesses like WeWork and it's not just WeWork. Like it's, a, it's I mean a, even even in Vietnam, you know, you guys. I mean, you, you raised the most amount of money, so it sounds like you had the most exposure in terms of media and press and the sensational kind of number. Um, but yeah, I mean, adding to that, just so the other readers out there know, um, it sounds like a lot of companies have gone out of business just the last two, three months since COVID. Um, so LeFlair, you know, unfortunately is not alone. Um, there's a few others that face the same fate, maybe didn't get as much press. Um, would you say through your experience, and maybe if you were to talk to those investors now, like, um, what, what were some of those opportunities? Uh, like if I'm an investor looking into Vietnam now, I could be here in Vietnam, I could be elsewhere. What are some hot spots? Like even for you, if you were to start a new company, what, what are some things to watch in Vietnam now? Um, like based on your experience building this company, what kind of direction or advice would you give out to those investors and startups? I think it's not my place to, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an investor. In, investing and in and in, in being an entrepreneur is a very different, very different job, and usually is done by very different people. So it's not my my. I'm gonna stay in my place, and and you know, I'm good at start, start, starting company, I believe, or at least I 
Vietnam is, 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 is still a territory where you have incredible opportunities. After that, we, one thing that we have to re remember, so, so us as entrepreneurs, is the fact that we, we have to remember that Vietnam and Southeast Asia is, especially if you're a foreigner, let's say you're a European like me or you're, you're, you're American and you come to Vietnam and you want to start a company and you think that you're going to be able to raise a lot of capital because because actually you have more more exposure southeast asia has more exposure than europe right now when it comes to venture capital people talk a lot more about southeast asia than they talk about europe but you have to remember that you know 50, there is 15 times less venture capital that is injected in southeast asia than in europe and that the capital that is injected in Southeast Asia goes to, you know, 50% goes to a handful of companies, right? Which leaves very, very little to uh, the, the remaining companies. And startups in Vietnam and Southeast Asia, you know, are created at a much higher rate than, than, than in other regions of the world because, you know, it's, it's for, for many reasons. People are very entrepreneurial entrepreneurial uh, it's relatively easy to start a company here especially if you are if you are Vietnamese or, or like and, and that the, the regulation obviously is is, is is much easier for you than for than for foreigners but don't forget that you have like Vietnam is a, is a zero to one kind of country right is it, you have very few barriers to uh, get to a small size business, but plenty, plenty, plenty of barriers to get to a large scale business, especially if you're in the consumer market and things like that, right? So I think that's why uh, uh, most of the capital today is going into businesses that are technically not dependent on the consumer market or consumer sentiment and so on, like real estate, like manufacturing and things like that. It makes sense when you, when you see the development stage of the, of the, of the country, right? Um, but yeah, I think, you know, a piece of advice for entrepreneurs, don't start a business uh, with in mind that you're going to be able to raise a, you know, tons of money because statistically it's not most likely not going to happen. What is the single most difficult lesson you've learned through this process, particularly through the end? Like what was so like challenging for you to kind of process um, during that time, like I, I quoting the Tech in Asia article that came out a week or so ago, you mentioned, you know, it's always easier to grow slowly, I think it was, rather than having to let go hundreds of people all at once. Um, was there a specific kind of... I didn't, say, I didn't say it's better to grow slow, don't get me wrong. That's not what I meant. I, tr I still believe, even though uh, probably tons of people may not agree with my approach right now, I'm, I'm, I believe that growth is the answer to almost every problem a startup uh, and that you should always chase chase growth, further growth, and so on. Because even I mean, with this, it it helps you again solve other problems that you may have. What I've what what I was trying to say in that article is basically that personally, I may have had at some point a bias, and and created a, a situation for myself and the company where the fact that you may have uh, sometimes people. Uh, doubting your ability to grow the business or doubt the uh, added value of your business. So, you know, basically, or, or that, or doubting what you spend so much time uh, uh, and what you've committed so, so, so much to, 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 to do and to develop, I think it, 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 it may create uh, sometimes a situation where, you know, you're a guy, you, want, you have something to prove and you're going to go at all costs prove that, you know, all those guys are wrong. And, 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 and that, you know, they shouldn't have doubted you, which can be an incredible fuel when, when <laughs> you know, it can give you, the, it, 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 it can give you a, a lot of energy to go, to go fix problem and tackle some, some problems. But, you know, we've, we've seen that if you are a go big or go home kind of guy, uh, you know, going home, going home is, 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 is painful. Uh, and it's not the it's not so much the personal bit that is the most painful is all the people that you bring down with you when 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 such a situation happens. So that's what I that's what I meant by this. The investors are going to be fine. Like, yes, it's a lot of money that they have lost. Of course, uh, like the CEO's responsibility is to is to basically uh, uh, 
the CEO works for the shareholders, right? So the CEO is supposed to make some money for the shareholders. And so basically, if the company does not make some money, it means that the CEO have not done his job. But then, like all the all the all the people that are going to be affected, the people that may not have the financial capacity that your shareholders uh, have to handle such a situation, this is the worst bit because your shareholders, yes, they're going to be upset, but they have ten other investments, right? Or, or twenty for some of them. Uh, some people that are working with you, you know, some of them may have, you know, gotten a mortgage, bought a, a new car, or a new bike, or or may be about to get married or just had a kid and things like that. And that's the, that's the, that's the hardest bit. The things that personally affects, uh, affects me most. So Loic, you know, thank you for sharing with, uh, with everyone here today, um, firsthand about your experience building, um, La Flair to where it's gone and, and, you know, taking the learnings that you've had to, to wind the company down as well. Um, so everyone is really keen, especially those close to you and that know your capabilities and your, your, your ambition. Um, what is your next play? Um, is it here in Vietnam? Is it outside? Is it in tech? What, what is that next play for you? I don't, honestly, I don't want to disappoint you, but I have, I have not, uh, I mean, I'm thinking about it, obviously, but uh, it's, it's, it's a bit early to, to, to share and to have certainty about where I, where, where I want my next entrepreneurial venture to be. What is sure is that at the moment, I, I kind of want to focus on sharing my experience and make sure that what I've learned over the past couple of years, I can, I can, can benefit uh, uh, some other companies and, 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 and some other people and so on. And I will do that you know, for, for as long as I can and for as long as there is, there is value for me in, in sharing this. I've also learned a big lesson in financial independence. I think that uh, uh, you you asked me one of the things that kind of I would regret most, uh, even though you know one one cannot live with with, with regret. But I think that uh, there are there are pros and cons to starting your company so young and without much. Um, kind of financial capacity and, and, and not being very financial stable bef before you start start such a company. I think we have to also look like uh, look, look at the past and how you, know, you have so many founders that are actually not in their 20s that start companies much, much, much later in life after having some other successes and being financial independent and so forth. I think you also have the vast majority of the businesses that do not need venture capital to grow uh, uh, to, to a significant size. Yes, sometimes it takes a little longer, but I think, you know, it's, we, we, we are a generation of, uh, of, of, of people and entrepreneur that, you know, in past, past 10, 10 years, we've, 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 you know, we've, we've read too many books about Facebook and Google's. We are, we are too exposed to, uh, to, uh, the, to, 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 to this, this tech and venture capital world where you know, people raise hundred millions of dollars from an ID and so on. But this, this is just such a small percentage of the actual businesses, but it gets so much exposure in the media that it creates, I think, in, in, in a lot of people's mind, a bias that this is the only way to do business. It's, it's actually not the only way to do business. Um, so I think that one thing that I want to achieve before my next venture is to make sure that I'm, I'm personally in a position where if something goes south in my company, I can put on, you know, my own capital to save it or, you know, to make my own decision and not to have to depend on anyone else to, to pay the bills and, 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 you know, I, I, I want to make sure that, you know, I, 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 I get full, full, full control over the. The, the possible outcome, be it you know positive or or, or or negative. So it's going to take a couple of years, but I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm gonna be back at it for sure in Vietnam and most likely overseas because I'm also French, right? So at some point I I, I also would be happy to uh, show my people uh, how 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 business is done as well. 